and welcome to Farmers to U.S. Presidents Virtual Show and Tell. My name is Lara Askell and I'm the Ag Ed Farm Manager with Metro Parks of Butler County. Now did you know that there are several U.S. Presidents that were actually farmers either before, during, or after they were the U.S. Presidents? Well, we're going to highlight just a few of them today in celebration of President's Day. Now, as you know, President's Day started out as a celebration for the birthday of our first president of the United States, which was George Washington. But now it's a federal holiday to help celebrate the lives and the legacies of all of our U.S. presidents. Now, of course, many of our first U.S. presidents came from farming families. Just think about it. In the late 1700s and the early 1800s, over half of our nation were living on farms. George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, and a few other of our first presidents were what we call progressive thinkers. They liked to experiment with the soil and their animals and their plants to see what would grow best here in the U.S. They believed that humans must work in harmony with the environment and protect its assets for the future generations. Because of that thinking, their experimentation, and their agricultural processes such as contour planting, or crop rotation, planting native plants to stop soil erosion, using natural fertilizers, and they would cultivate hundreds of different kinds of fruits and vegetables. Those are all agricultural processes that then of course paved the way for future farmers and others that became the U.S. president too. And I'm going to show you a picture of a president. We'll have the years that they were the U.S. president, and then I'm going to give you a little bit of information about them. Listen closely because there will be a clue that you can then find the answer to in the crossword puzzle at the end of this activity. Good luck. Farmers to U.S. presidents. Our first president is Abraham Lincoln. In 1862, he established the U.S. Department of Agriculture, which was called the People's Department which was especially true at the time since half of the nation's people earned a living from farming. President Roosevelt, on a hunting trip out west, he fell in love with the land and a lifelong passion for conservation began. He was a cattle rancher, which is maintained by the National Park Service now. His nickname is Teddy. President Truman grew up on a farm which had lots of different animals, so he had to grow crops to feed them. His mother said he could plant perfectly straight rows of corn. President Johnson is a cattle rancher. Even while president, he kept tabs on his cattle ranch and wore cowboy hat and boots while in office. He did Hereford cattle. President Carter was part of FFA in high school, Georgia's first and only president so far, famous for growing a legume called peanuts. President Clinton spent lots of time on his great uncle and aunt's farm, where he did picking of beans, corn, tomatoes, and feeding animals. President Bush was also another cattle rancher and was known for raising different kinds of grasses to feed his cows. Now, if possible for this next activity, go ahead and print off, cut out your three pieces. If you have colored paper, that's great. If not, just use white paper and you can color it. So after cutting out, take your little metal brad, put it in your figure, which then attaches to the middle section, which then attaches to the larger section. If you open up the back like this, then you'll have a spinning activity. why I have these hats sitting on the table. Like this hat. Maybe this hat. No, 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 no. How about this hat? What does a lot of hats have to do with farmers? Now a farmer has to wear a lot of different types of hats. And that just means that they have a lot of different types of jobs that they need to do to be successful. For example, 
Look at your spinner and place your figure underneath the weather forecast hat. That's the one that looks like a rain hat that has raindrops on it. Then turn your weather forecast middle section to where it talks about what a farmer who is doing the weather forecast job has to do. And it should read, must understand weather and climate, be aware of possible weather changes, and know how to prepare for these changes. So it should look like this. Now, why would a farmer have to be a weather forecaster? Well, can a farmer plant corn out in a field when there's snow on the ground or when the temperature's below freezing? No, not if he wants the corn to grow. So a farmer always has to make sure that they know what the weather is going to do. Let's try a different one. How about the business manager? So find the hat that's got the dollar symbol on it. Then you need to find out where the job description is that talks about a business manager. How about, must be able to balance accounts, sell farm produce to the market, be responsible for making payments and payrolls, and keep track of equipment, products, and land. That's just one job of many jobs that a farmer has to do. Well, let's face it. Why do farmers work 365 days a year? Was to feed their family, take care of their animals, and to make money by selling their products to help feed the rest of the world. So go find your best hat and then continue on with the rest of the spinner activity and go through all the sections so that you can see what are all the rest of the hats that a farmer has to do. Good luck, have fun. So what is there not to love about these two beautiful Seabright Bantam hens that live here at Chris Home Historic Farmstead? Bantam means small size, and these are true bantams. It is a miniature bird that doesn't have a comparable larger or a standard size equivalent. Now, Seabrights are one of the oldest recorded British bantam breeds. They are named after Sir John Sanders Seabright, who created it as an ornamental breed by selective breeding in the early 1800s. Sir Seabright was the seventh Seabright baronet and a member of parliament. He bred different species of animals and wrote several influential pamphlets on their care, upkeep, and breeding specifications. Charles Darwin read some of his pamphlets and was impressed with the passage, the weak and the unhealthy do not live to propagate their infirmities. This aided in the inception of Darwin's theory of natural selection. Seabrights are a very popular exhibition breed. They produce teeny tiny little white eggs, and obviously, due to their small size, they are not raised for meat production. Do you see the beautiful scallop feathers with black edging? They also have unfeathered legs with a lovely slate blue skin. Now the boys are called roosters, and they are hen feathered roosters, which means they do not have long sickle shaped feathers like other roosters that appear in the tail, the neck, and the saddle. Hen feathering is used to study sex hormones. This is because they carry a mutation that causes the tissues of their skin to convert an unusually large amount of male sex hormones into female sex hormones. But we don't have to worry about that because all we have are girls here. We have hens. Notice how she is standing on one leg? It's cold outside. So she is keeping one leg warm at a time by pulling it up against her body and underneath her feathers. We also have a nice chicken coop here for it too. Here at the farm, they get lots and lots of different treats, grain, fresh water every day, and lots of attention. So come on out and visit them. Thank you very much for joining us for our Farmers to U.S. President's Virtual Show and Tell. Our next one is scheduled for Sunday, February the 14th at 2 p.m., and it is titled Love is on the Farm in celebration of Valentine's Day. If you can't join us at that time, don't worry. You can see the video on our website at yourmetroparks.net. Go to log off, shut down, get outside, and you can see our video and the other programs that we've had listed. Thank you very much.